Greetings and welcome to the November 2023 edition of the Fraser Valley Presale Pulse, bringing you the latest real estate intelligence on the Valley's presale and resale marketplace over the past 30 days. I'm Susanna Gonzalez. And I'm Brittany Reimer. And there is a lot of buzz so far in November, so it was both positive and negative on the presale launch, uh, launches that have happened this month. Now, there were six presale launches in the Fraser Valley that this past month, bringing just under 500 units to market. Now, some standout launches included High Street Village's third building, which sold out as early as early November. Now, not resting on their laurels, they began previewing Building 4 on November 11th and are likely to begin writing in late November or early December. Britt, this is an interesting market to navigate right now. What do you think is the formula for success in the current market? <laughs> no well, idea. Yeah, I mean, that is easy, a, easy that is a lofty uh, question, Suze. You know, in a market like Metro Vancouver, where pre-sale activity is slowing, the depth of your realtor database is really critical for all programs and registrations. Um, it's really about having a rich, well-segmented network that includes not just potential buyers, but also fellow realtors and industry contacts. Yeah, depth is one thing. But how does the quality of a database translate into actual sales, especially now? Yeah, well, I mean, I think um, the reality is quality means knowing that your contacts intimately, um, understanding their buying preferences and investment strategies. You know, it's depth that allows for personalized outreach, which is, which is really essential in a market that's becoming increasingly resistant to generic sales tactics. Obviously, offering and incentives and how you're positioning programs is really, really important right now as well. So it's about building relationships and having the right offering. I mean, yeah, that's certainly a big part of it. Um, the strength of a realtor's relationship dictates the speed of efficiency and those transactions. Now, it's really about nurturing those connections over time. So when there's an opportunity, you're really ready to move quickly and you can tap into that network. Yeah, well said, Brett. We need to cast the net wide in these markets so a strong and broad network of agent relationships is key. All right, Brett, let's talk wood frame launches in Surrey because there are a few. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Sue. Surrey is on fire. It seems like October was the month for wood frame projects to preview and launch. Now, first on our list of projects is Gabriel by Whitetail Homes in central Surrey, located near King George Skytrain Station. Now, Gabriel began sales in mid-October, selling dozens of homes uh, from their initial release. Now, the project offers an array of amenities, which include a fitness area, a home office hub, a kitchen and a lounge area, a courtyard with a barbecue and kids playground, and a rooftop patio with a garden. Yeah, we spoke about it last month, but amenity spaces continue to be an important factor for purchase decisions um, in today's market. And we are seeing developers leverage these spaces to gain a competitive advantage. You're spot on. Now, amenity spaces have played a crucial role in enhancing the condo living experience, extending beyond the confines of the buyer's individual unit, particularly on the wood frame side. Now, I also believe that the extra features and offerings play an important role in enhancing the condo lifestyle as well. For instance, Gabriel offers Ruffton AV charging for all stalls with the possibility to upgrade. And interestingly, they have a BYO AC program, giving buyers the option to bring their own AC unit as each home is equipped with one exhaust vent for installation. That's a new one. Yes. You know what? It's interesting. AC is the hottest topic in our boardroom these days. And I've actually heard of this BYOB AC system. Um, and I can see how it could be beneficial, especially during those handful of hot summer weeks. Um, obviously, a cost saving there as well. Um, but but no doubt, I, I still think buyers are preferring the traditional uh, format of air conditioning offering. All right, Britt, tell me about Guilford the Greatest. Yeah, the anticipated Guilford the Greatest by Dawson is where launched their sales campaign late October, selling 55% of their release units in the first couple of weeks. Now, the project comprises of a total of 115 homes in a six-story building located in close proximity to Guilford Town Centre and surrounded by uh, three city parks. Now, this is an excellent location that has surprisingly not witnessed much new development. With Guilford Town Centre nearby, this neighbourhood provides a wide range of retail and dining options. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Suze. The project itself fe features 13,000 square feet of outdoor amenities, including a park, walking paths, community garden, and outdoor fire pits. Inside, there's 2,000 square feet of amenity space with a fitness area, crafts room, ping pong tables, fireside lounge, and more. Yeah, it sounds like Guilford the Greatest has lots to offer. Speaking of offerings, for the grand opening on November 4th, promotions are advertised as an $80,000 value in total. This includes $10,000 off any home, a split deposit of 10%, and several included upgrades valued at over $70,000. It is worth mentioning that these inclusions entail parking stall and storage locker, choice of three color schemes, a new lighting and plumbing fixtures, washer dryer, blinds, a lot of offering or a lot of offering and upgrades for this program. Yeah, that's an interesting marketing tactic. Some of the inclusions that are promoted as an $80,000 credit often turn out to be standard offerings, making it challenging to determine the actual value of the promotion. 
But let's get to the chase. What are the starting prices for these units and how are they performing? Yeah, I mean, that's a good uh, good point and great question, Sue. Starting prices range from the mid 400,000s for one bedrooms um, up to the high sevens for three uh, bedroom units. In terms of performance from our sources, we've heard that this has been among the most challenging launches that Dawson and Sawyer has experienced to date. Um, of the 115 homes, they have sold approximately 25 homes which really is actually consistent with what we're seeing the same month absorption across the the market right now. Again, we typically like to see that same month absorption a little bit higher, um, but uh, but pretty consistent uh, across programs right now. Yeah, now Dawson Store is, is known for their attractive price points. The building typically sells out fast, but this would be atypical um, performance for them just overall. Um, in this case, I think current market conditions may be playing a big factor um, in their performance, like you mentioned, other launches are as well. Now we'll be watching the project closely to see how they perform heading forward um, into the to the next few months here. And speaking of upcoming developments, our next project feature, Gildan by RDG Development, is bringing 187 units to the neighborhood of Guilford, a short distance from Guilford the Greatest. Gildan held their realtor event on October 30th in the Sheridan Hotel in Surrey, as their presentation center isn't quite ready yet. So as sales ramp up, realtors can expect quite the bonus program rate with potential earnings of up to $80,000 on 15 sales. That is quite enticing, uh, $80,000 on 15 sales. Now it appears that a highly appealing bonus structure has been crucial, a crucial factor in the pre-sale market um, in many of these recently launched programs to get realtors in the door. Unfortunately, I don't believe the depth of the realtors uh, in terms of the volume they can actually bring to the market is really quite there to earn that type of bonus or even really motivate somebody to try to hit that type of bonus. Agreed. I was just about to ask, who's doing 15 deals in that market? Uh, projects have become increasingly more creative with their offerings to both realtors and buyers to separate themselves from competition. For example, Gildan is offering buyers free upgrades on flooring and bedrooms and closet organizers in primary bedrooms, as well as three years of rental management at $95 a month and a reduced assignment fee of 0%. And the first 50 homes will uh, be entered into a giveaway for five free parking stalls and five free storage lockers to be given away. Yeah, a lot of incentives and offerings there, Suze. Um, one of the hottest offerings and incentives we're seeing right now is deposit bonds. Um, we get a lot of questions about that for our own programs. And I think, like quite frankly, if you don't have that type of program in place, that investor market, particularly in the Fraser Valley, is just the depth isn't there. You know, High Street and Abbotsford saw really great success with their deposit bond program. And, and really, those realtors are bringing their clients specifically there for that offering. Um, and most developers, as we know, just don't have the ability with the pre-sale targets that are set in place early in programs to be able to accommodate that type of incentive. That's super interesting because we've we've seen deposit bonds come up a lot over the years and they particularly come up in markets like this, but we often don't see a ton of pickups, which is interesting that in this case, it's actually had uh, a real impact in a positive way for, for that project. Absolutely. A combination of price point and deposit bond um, and incentives has really been sort of the secret weapon to see success in the month of October and November anyways for the Fraser Valley. All right, now let's move on to the resale stats. Um, now sales activity continues to decrease in the Fraser Valley for the fourth consecutive month in October. At 970 sales, we saw approximately a 12% decrease in sales compared to September. Yeah, the slowdown in the Fraser Valley has definitely been significant. Even though we are seeing sales 8% higher than this time last year, activity remains 34% below the 10 year average of 1461 sales in October. Now it's obvious that interest rate hikes back in June and July have recently um, and really impacted the market as we continue to see a decrease in sales activity month after month. Now buyers are likely continuing to exercise increased caution by sitting on the sidelines and waiting for more stability in the market before re-entering um, and most importantly, redoing their mortgages. And how is supply looking? Well, we saw a total of 6,700 listings in October, which was only a 0.7 in, uh, increase from the month before. Now, increasing overall listings combined with lower than normal sales activity has led October to creep closer to a buyer's market with a sales to listing ratio of 15%. Now, this ratio was previously at 17% for the month of September. How has that affected prices, Britt? Yeah, I mean, prices are beginning to reflect these changes um, as benchmark pricing continues to decrease for the third month in a row. Now we're sitting at 1,015,000 for the month of October. This is a 1.4% lower than the previous month and 15.2% below the peak pricing seen in March 2022. Yeah, it is, however, worth noting that the reason for such a big drop in benchmark pricing from the previous month is mostly attributed to detached homes, which saw a 1.5% decrease. Meanwhile, townhomes and apartments remain more modest with a decrease in price of about 0.4% and 0.1% respectively. 
And I believe that wraps us up on another edition of the Fraser Valley Presale Pulse. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and Newswire, our daily email newsletter, providing you with the latest real estate news. We want you to stay informed and real estate intelligent. Great. Thank you for joining us in the Fraser Valley for the Fraser Valley Presale Pulse. We'll see you next month.